Thank you for joining us Around the Fire. For more information or to make a donation, please visit randomactnetwork.com. Now, want to hear a scary story? Everyone in Loomis County knew the story of what happened on the railroad tracks just outside of the city. Years ago, a bus full of children was on its way home from a field trip when the engine gave out on the tracks. Nobody made it off the bus in time, and everyone was killed. Some say you can hear the voices or laughter of the children if you're walking through the area at night. Not that there's much of a reason to be on foot so far out of town. Jimmy and Nancy were headed home from a party, still buzzing from the friends and loud music. As their vehicle neared the train tracks, there was a sudden loud from the engine, and the car began filling with smoke. Jimmy gripped the steering wheel, trying his hardest to bring the jolting and sputtering car to a safe stop. With one final exhausted cough, the engine gave out, and they came to a standstill. Nancy, roll your window down. The smoke... They opened their windows, and the air in the cabin began to clear. This revealed their resting place. The car had stopped, directly on the tracks. <coughs> Jimmy, what happened? Is everything all right? The damn thing won't start. He rubbed the gas, but the car only groaned. And then, the crossing lights began flashing, and the barriers lowered towards the ground. Far in the distance, a glimmer of light broke through the darkness. A train was headed directly towards them. Train! Jimmy! Jimmy, there's a train! I see it, okay? Jimmy removed the keys and tried starting the engine again, but nothing happened. Please hurry, Jimmy! The train is coming! Screw it, let's go. Jimmy unbuckled himself and reached for the door. In the passenger seat, Nancy found herself trapped by an unrelenting seatbelt. I can't, I can't, I can't get it off! The buckle had been sticking lately, but Jimmy was usually able to free it with a few minutes of pulling and twisting. Time they didn't have now. He dove towards the buckle, pulling at the fabric with all his strength. It's getting tighter! It hurts! Can you pull yourself out? Leave it buckled, but slide out the bottom. It's too tight, Jimmy! Please, I don't want to die! I'm trying! <laughs> Fucking cut it! With what? Deep rumble began to shake the entire car as the train approached. Yet Nancy's seatbelt wouldn't budge. Her fingers left bloody smears across the belt as she hopelessly pulled and prodded. Oh my god, Jimmy! The train's horn blew and blew again, and finally they heard the piercing whistle of the brakes. Jimmy was trying to pry the buckle apart with the car key, but to no avail. It's... it's stopping! Will it stop? It's not gonna stop in time, Nance. As the train barreled towards them, the couple met each other's swelling eyes. Jimmy... You have to go. I'm not leaving you. Get out of here! No! Not without you. I won't leave you here. There was nothing more to say. He pulled himself close to her and held tight. Knowing they were doomed, Jimmy and Nancy braced for certain death. But then, the car suddenly lurched forward. They gasped as a second and third thrust cleared them from the tracks with just seconds to spare. The train engine passed behind them with a roar, eventually screeching to a stop several hundred yards away. How did you do that? I didn't do anything. Still shaking, Jimmy opened his car door and stepped onto the gravel road. He didn't know how to properly thank whoever had saved their lives. But as he looked around in the bright moonlight, he couldn't see anyone at all. Hello? Hello? Hello! Finally, Nancy's seatbelt freed itself, and she fell from the open car door almost instantly. She went to Jimmy, embracing him and wiping the sweaty bangs from her eyes. There's nobody here. They looked ahead at the train cars, now silent and still. Are they on the other side? There's no way they could have... Maybe they're just shy. Nancy called into the night. Thank you! Thank you for saving our lives. Their only answer was the wind. Jimmy kissed Nancy's forehead and pulled her even closer. I'm so glad we're okay. Me too. They stood there a while, her arms tucked around him on the inside of his jacket. 
The train conductor yelled something, but he was too far to comprehend. At some point, the engine started up again, and the rail cars began to move. It was time for the young couple to get on their way, too. Jimmy and Nancy turned back towards the car, unsure of what they'd do now. After such a close call with death, there were worse-sounding things than a long walk back to the city. Maybe someone would pick them up along the way. Jimmy, do you see that? Her eyes were on the back of the car. Along the bumper, there were dozens of small handprints lingering in the dust from the road. Do you think? She couldn't bring herself to say it out loud, and neither could he. Yeah, I do. Shaking, Jimmy turned back around towards the crossing. Had the tracks always shimmered like that in the moonlight? Thank you. Nancy and Jimmy knew it was the ghosts of the children who worked together to make sure their tragedy wouldn't be repeated. They grabbed their essentials from the car and began walking towards the slight glow of the city, hand in hand. As they walked, Nancy recalled something about the events years ago that she'd long forgotten. Witnesses reported that the school bus driver opened the door and nearly stepped off the bus before the collision. They said he could have lived. But he stayed with the children. He wouldn't leave them behind. The next day, Jimmy returned with a tow truck, eager to share the handprints with another viewer. But by the time they arrived, they had long faded back into the dust. Railroad Tracks, told by Hannah Mary Simpson, featuring Aaron Holland and Ashlyn Seehafer. Hafer.